Hello. Today we're going to talk about the concept of SVO. SVO. And this is the formula by which the sentence in Spanish is produced whenever you speak or whenever you write. English is also an SVO language, by the way. And SVO is a classification linguists use to put together languages into categories. So English is an SVO language, and Spanish most of the time is. So today we're going to assume that Spanish is always an SVO language, and I'll teach you the formula. Now, like in math or in physics or in chemistry, once you know the formula, all you have to do is replace the numbers of the elements in the formula, and you have new, a new uh, system. The same happened with this. Once you know what these things stand for, you will learn vocabulary and replace those words with new words, and you have sentences, and more sentences, you'll be fluent in Spanish in no time at all. This will save you tons of time and effort learning how the language operates. It makes sense. If you're trying to learn Chinese, you should need to know how is it that they put together. What comes first, the noun, the pronoun, the verb, the object, the subject. So it pays to pay attention, take time to pay attention to how the syntax, the word order, that's what it means, word order, it's a fancy word for word order, in the sentence operates. So the formula for Spanish is subject, verb, object. So subject, verb, object. Now, the subject in Spanish can be three things. It can be a noun. We all know that, a noun. Makes sense. A noun. It can also be a pronoun. Or it could be one of those long noun phrases. It's a phrase that includes nouns in it. A noun phrase. Going back to the noun, the noun could be a proper noun, like say Pedro, or in English Bill, or it can be a common noun, like say Professor, or in Spanish Profesor. So here we have the noun could be a proper noun or a common noun. Now the pronoun is easy. That only means that it can be something like, say, she, or in Spanish, ella. Okay? Pronouns. Yo, tú, usted, él, ella. Nosotros, vosotros, ustedes, ellos, ellas. Or in English, I, you, he. She, it, we, you, they. Very simple. A noun phrase is one of those long constructions, as I mentioned. And you say, for instance, the man to my right. All that. It was a noun, but it's a whole phrase. That's why it's called a noun phrase. Or in Spanish, el libro de español. So, that is a description of the three kinds of subject we can have. So, whenever you open your mouth in class, or put your pencil to paper, always think, hmm, I'm going to start my sentence using the subject, a subject, and I have three choices. I can make it a noun of a person, the name of an object, in the case of a common noun, I can make it a pronoun, or I can make it a noun phrase, a more descriptive, longer structure that includes a noun. Alright? Now, the formula says S-V-O. The second element is V. V stands for verb. Verb. Now, what that is telling us is that once we, we establish the subject of a sentence, and let's say that the um, sentence is going to start with, say, we're going to take a pronoun, say, uh, ella, or they say she, or ella. Okay? That's our starting point today. We start our sentence today with, with the type of subject as a pronoun. 
Now, we need a verb. And let's say that we have, we have here the choice of saying to speak. That would be a verb of the day. So what the formula says is that once you have a subject and you pick a verb that the subject is going to perform the action, you don't say she to speak, do you? Of course not. This implies that the verb must follow the subject in form. There should be a correspondence, a harmony of sorts between the verb and the subject. So what you need to do is conjugate the verb to match the subject. So we don't say she to speak. We say she speaks, she speaks. See, we make this match our subject. That's what the formula is implying. Or in Spanish, speak would be hablar. So ella, we will say ella hablar, we say ella habla. Yo hablo, tú hablas, usted habla, él habla, ella habla. Ella habla. We look for the ending that matches my subject the same way I did in English. Okay? So we have now two of the elements of our formula, subject and verb. But now we have the O. The O stands for object. Now what is the object of a sentence? Well, basically, it is all that additional information, who, where, when, with whom, why, how frequently, and so forth. So if I am to add that information, say, the what, where, when, with whom, why, how often, okay, all this possibly, okay. So going back to our sentence, let's add that additional information to my sentence to make it something more logical and appealing. So, she speaks, what does she speak? She speaks French. That would be my what. Where? In class. My where. That and that. When? Every day. That's my when. Okay. With whom? With her peers. We make with whom? Why? Because she wants to practice to practice her French. Why? You get the picture. The object is a collection of additional information as to the what is it the person, what is the action, uh, what is it the person does, where the person does the action, when, how often, with whom, the reason for the person to do that. Now all that in Spanish would be something like this. Ella habla francés. Says, I'll be the what? En clase. I'll be the where? Todos los días. I'll be the when? You get the picture. So, recapping here, if you are trying to learn Spanish, it pays to know how is it that Hispanics put a sentence together. And whenever we speak, speakers of Spanish, whenever we write in Spanish, we have a subject. We start every sentence with a subject. And then we follow that with a verb. And then we add an object. Recapping, if it is a subject, it can only be three things. It can be a noun, whether it's proper or common. It can be a pronoun. It can be a noun phrase. So once we have picked the kind of verb we want, and pardon me, the kind of subject we want, 
we have to find a verb and then make a match. We have to conjugate the verb, that is, make the verb match the subject. You don't say, I eats. You say, I eat. She eats. He eats. So we, that's conjugate, to make the verb match the subject. That's what that means, nothing else. All these fancy words can be deconstructed for you to understand, so they're useful to us non-linguists, okay? So that is the secret formula of how the Spanish language works, also English, by the way. So whenever you are thinking of saying something in class, you ask the question, ¿Cómo te llamas? You have to start, wait a minute, the subject, it's talking about me, yo. That will be your subject. Me llamo, the verb. David. Mm -hmm. Donde vives? They ask you something like that. Where do you live? Wait a minute. I have to start with a pronoun. I live in Valdosta. So start with the subject. Mm -hmm. Donde está la biblioteca Odom? Where is Odom Library? So I have to start with the subject. It cannot be I, he, she, because the subject is the library. So it's one of those noun phrases. The library is to my right. La biblioteca está a mi derecha. Y por eso es que es muy importante aprender la fórmula SBO. And that's why it's critical. It's so, so important to learn this. Because once you know this, all you have to do, think about this, the simplicity is amazing. All you have to do, because you know the pronouns, you know the subject, that you, can, you are in complete control of that. All you have to do to become proficient in Spanish is learn more verbs and more vocabulary to add. So if you say, I'm going to learn five verbs a week, that's 50 weeks a year, that's 150 verbs at least. You're going to learn five new words every week, that's 20 words a month. Okay? So you can fill in the blanks here replacing this. This is your sub you or whatever you want, that you're in control of the subject. So all you have to do is replace this V with your own verbs, the ones you had learned, and say anything about that, sub that, that verb and the subject. That's it. So if you learn to use SVO as the formula to your success, it'll be of tremendous help to you. I hope this helps. Bye.